Chris from Highline Handmade Electric Guitars and Pickups. And in the last week, I received about 20,000 emails asking me, Chris, how do you get a perfect radius in a fretboard? Well, I use a couple of different techniques. Um, in this demonstration, I'm going to show how I achieve a radius using nothing more than a simple uh, radius sanding block. Uh, in this case, I'm using a Stumac 12-inch radius sanding block. Uh, I use a variety of different grit sandpapers. I started with 60 to basically hog out the whole radius. Then I moved on to 80, and right now I'm on 100. And then I'll go to 120, 150, and 220 to finish it. Uh, the way I do this is really simple. Um, I attach the fretboard blank to, this is just a sheet of scrap laminate floor material. And I like to use that stuff because it's really flat. And um, it, it seems to work well uh, with double stick tape so it holds the fretboard while I'm sanding. Um, I also use a piece of uh, poplar which is clamped next to the fretboard and that helps me to keep my sanding block moving straight. Um, that's important because normally in a sanding motion we have a tendency to curve our or to move off to the sides. So having a, a guide board will keep you keep the uh, sanding block centered on the fretboard. Uh, the other thing is, this is about a 20 inch long, two and a half inch wide, and quarter inch thick. Uh, this is bird's eye maple. I keep the, the width of it consistent from, from the nut side to the heel side because I find that if you go ahead and cut the taper before you radius the, the fretboard, you run the risk of sanding the nut side, which is narrower, down uh, thinner than you do the heel because the nut reaches radius quicker than the heel does. Another concern is the motion of sanding back and forth across, along the length means that you're going to be going over the center twice as much as you will the ends. That means you're going to reach the radius quicker in the center than you will out at, at both ends. And the problem is, is by the time you reach the correct radius at the ends, you'll have actually thinned out the center of the fretboard. So what I try to do is I try to uh, keep an eye on that center. And as soon as it reaches a smooth and consistent radius, then I'll start to focus on working back here and bringing that radius gradually towards the center on both ends. That way I keep the fretboard's thickness consistent. Um, so that's really all there is to it. Um, now it's important to remember that uh, we're only human and whenever humans try to do a repetitive task, they oftentimes will introduce a flaw to that task that gets repeated with every uh, motion. So if you're standing back and forth like this, there's a good chance that you're varying the weight. You may even be, without realizing it, uh, shifting the block around a little bit and you're going to be doing that consistently and as a result you're going to cause uh, problems to form in the consistency of your radius. You may not realize that but it, it will be there and that can cause problems later on when you go to, to level your frets. So one of the things you want to do is you want to vary your sanding stroke and that means you can start out like this then you'll need to switch and do like this. And then you'll want to come all the way around and do like this. And then finally, you want to hit it like that. So you want to just keep circling around as you're sanding. That way, you're eliminating um, repetitive error in your sanding stroke. So uh, that's essentially how it's done. And um, if you are really concerned about checking your progress, one of the things that I like to do is when I switch to the uh, next grit is I like to just mark up the, the top of my fretboard all the way along its length like this. And you want to make sure that your pencil marks go all the way across. Then you can go back and start to sand and watch that those pencil lines disappear. And as they disappear, you know you've finished with that grip. And that's really all it takes on each grip. 
The 60 is always going to take the longest because you're generating the curve. But each successive grit after that only takes a couple of minutes to remove the scratches from the previous grit, and then you can move on. Now, once this is done, I'll cut the taper, or actually I'll slot it, cut the taper, glue it to the neck, then I'll sand the whole surface with 400, 600, and 800 grit, and I'll just wrap that paper around a foam sponge because at that stage, you're not changing the shape, you're just smoothing it out. Then after that's done, I'll, add, I'll install uh, fret wire. Okay, so this is uh, what I've ended up with. Um, and you know, before you call it a day, you're gonna wanna check to make sure that your radius is accurate. Now uh, you can go out and buy those uh, fancy radius gauges or you can just use the sanding block and lay it down on there to see how close you are to the radius. And I'm pretty close on this one all the way across. There's a little bit of turn down at the edge, but I think that um, that's gonna go away once I cut the taper. So I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm ready to slot taper and then glue this thing onto the neck.